Hi, hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Rite of Passage podcast. Today, we're gonna to be talking to you about knowledge. And knowledge that comes from books. So today, we'll be talking about books, why you should read it, why we read it, and some books that we would like to suggest you to try out and read yeah. if you're not a big book reader like myself. Yeah, maybe we'll get a book club going, who knows. But guys, I personally, I have read way too many books I agree. in the past two years. I'm looking at the website right now, I think there's about 80. Yeah, so I, I like to get my books off of Audible. I feel like I multitask pretty well, so I like to listen to my books. Also, I'm like a little bit dyslexic. Like I, I'm a horrible reader when it comes to paper. I feel like it just never, <laughs> it takes me so long. Like if I sit down and just like actually read a book, it might take me forever, forever. Yeah. probably like 20 hours to read like, <laughs> 200 pages at most. That's actually not bad for 20 hours. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's like, I grew up, my little brother, he would best me at everything when it came to reading. Like, the dude read, like, the entire Harry Potter series in two days. Okay. How long did you do? I, I couldn't even finish it. It was way too long. I did I did Audible. But yeah, that was like 10,000 pages or something. Probably a little bit less than 10,000. But two pa- two days? So, I like to do Audible, but on my Audible, I have like 80 different books that I've listened to. Okay, here's, okay here's the question we talk about reading books, right? Yeah. When, we talk, when people challenge each other, like, hey, read this book in like two days, right? Yeah. Do you feel, how much knowledge do you think that is stuck with them in that two days? Like, let's say they have Harry Potter, 10,000, right? In those two days, what, how much capacity do you think like, it actually goes into the brain? I think probably about... 10 to 20 of percent of it depending on the person i feel like they can retain some of it or they'll retain the things that they find important to themselves so for example when i read a book i listen to it on like times two times three speed get it done really fast and like i'll finish it in one day two days three days depending on how long the book is and i'll probably remember maybe 20 percent of it but that 20 percent is something that i can use to help change my life a little bit so it kind of depends. Obviously, with Harry Potter and other more um, fantasy-based books, it may be a little bit easier to remember some of the plot lines from the beginning books or things like that. But in terms of different books like biographies or self-help books or other books that contain knowledge that teach you, you might only remember about 20%. Right. Makes sense. Like a textbook for college. Mm-hmm. How much do you remember every textbook? question is, do I read my textbook? That is a good question. Like, do you read it? <laughs> no. I read it if I have to, but like, I don't know, I think go, when we talk about books, I, I feel like you need to really have the passion yeah. uh, and the patience that comes with reading books. Honestly, let's, let's be honest, like, would anyone, like, say, hey, I'll go read a book. I'm sure there is, but like, what are the chances that a lot of people, especially in college, they say, hey, I'll go read a book, you know? Yeah, I don't think a lot of people read now, books. A lot of people, day. but I feel like Audible, also, Audible is not sponsoring this, but if they would like to, Please you know, sponsor us. You know where to find us. This guy will be ambassador. Yeah, I use way too many books from you guys. Yeah, but but I feel like Audible, I said, because you know, everybody's on their earphone nowadays. Whenever we walk around campus, you see everyone with their earphones, right? Yeah. So you, I feel like Audible gives people a chance to be able to read. And I think, yeah. all, all, to me, I'm just saying, I haven't tried it out, but I should. <laughs> but I feel like your chance of retaining information is much more than doing it so fast and just reading it. Yeah, like if you can listen to it and read it at the same time, I feel like, yeah, you'll retain so much more information when it comes to that. So also, I feel like it's just effective. Like all the time we're walking around, we walk to class, it takes 10 minutes or whatever. Just pop in your AirPod and walk. There you go. 10 minutes of knowledge that you get instead of just listening to Facebook or who knows what random music, whatever you want. It may still be good for you, but I would like to replace it with a good podcast or with a book. Just something that can help me improve myself a little bit. That's the goal, I guess. Makes sense. Yeah. So over the past about two years, I've been able to read way too many books. My m- most recent one that I just finished is A Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. Have you heard that one, Daryl? No. Okay. So guys, this one's pretty interesting. Victor, he was a guy, he was a Jew in back in world war ii okay and he went through the holocaust basically he was in the concentration camps for the majority of world war ii i think it started in like 
1941 or some some time frame around then but basically he is a psychologist who went through this extremely like horrible awful situation and he found a man's search for meaning he found a purpose in life that kept propelling him forward so that unlike many other people who had the same situation and gave up and then died he was able to survive and make it through it so i think you can learn a lot from these books and especially from these people's experiences that's one of the cool things nowadays like back in the 1800s, you might have had to experience all of that on your own in order to learn from it. Okay. But nowadays, we can just read somebody else's experience and hopefully you can learn from that yourself. I feel like that's probably the most important thing about books is you can learn so much more than you possibly could on your own through your own experiences, even over an entire lifetime. It's basically reading like hundreds of people's lifetimes condensed into a short summary of what was actually important. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know. Books don't necessarily only have to be about what you learn. Sometimes they can be something kind of fun or something that you enjoy. Like as a as a kid, only books I read in elementary school. I hated I hated reading as a kid, honestly, just because I was so slow at it and I felt so bad compared to my little brother. Mm -hmm. But the only book I would read was the Percy Jackson series because I thought it was just interesting and kind of fun which was all Greek mythology and all of that. And from that one little kind of fun series that I read, then I started branching into actual Greek mythology. I started reading the Iliad and the Odyssey and all those other books. And then that got me into the Roman Empire. And I started learning about, or I started reading biographies about Julius Caesar and Marcus Aurelius and all these different things. So it's kind of like from, you can start at something that is a little bit easier, a little bit of a lighter read, I would say, something that you find really enjoyable. And from that, that can kind of inspire passion to go all the way and then start learning about all these different things about the history of these people, a history of different um, energies, just everything basically. So I think that was something that really helped motivate me into actually reading and actually starting to read over these past two years that I've been in college, which is really interesting, I guess. But I guess, Daryl, for you, so before we started this podcast, you mentioned that <laughs> you haven't really read a whole lot of books, yeah? I haven't read a whole book. So I guess I want to ask, like, what is... <laughs> All right, two books, yeah? Two, two books. There we go. Like, what is the obstacle that you face when it comes to completing books? Because I know you've started a lot of books. <clears throat> I started a lot of books, you're correct. Yeah, but what stops you from finishing those books? I don't know. I, th I feel like... I feel like everybody has a different way of finding things interesting. Yeah. For me, I find, okay, I find books interesting, like stories, like what you say. Stories of people's lives, but they are compressed into a book, yeah. correct? For me, i rather watch than read. That makes sense. For example, um, there's a movie, I don't think it's out yet, maybe it is, I just haven't watched it yet, but it's a story about a guy who created Lamborghini. Yeah. I think he has a, he has a book about it. But there was a movie that came out recently, mm -hmm. and I saw the trailer. And I thought that was dope. I'm sure there's a book about it, but I feel like when they re make it into a movie, it's just easy for me to feel connect with the story. That makes sense. Cause I, I know, I'm more of a visual guy. I like to see for me to understand. <coughs> Jeez, don't die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. For me, I feel like I like to start books, but I feel like my whole passion of finishing that book just dies. You know. And I feel, but if it's a movie, I feel like I would have kept on That makes sense. Like, it's just me. Honestly, I feel like our generation a lot, <coughs> like, we rely so much on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever, all the different social media platforms that are all visual with right. a little bit of audio on top of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel, I learn a lot from YouTube. Like, YouTube is where I go for anything. And if I don't know how to change my oil, look it up on YouTube, learn how to change my oil. But... I feel like that comes at a more practical sense, I guess, in terms of like learning things. Like if I go to class, don't know how to do statistics for math, <laughs> I look it up on YouTube, watch another teacher. Right, because you can't, you can't read about it, you know? Yeah, it's too hard to read certain things like that. But I see, totally agree. When, when you read something, I feel like it's hard to understand because it's hard to imagine, it's hard to visualize. But when you put it into video, it's yeah. easier for you to understand. Not to disregard saying that book sucks, because when you look at it, most some of the movies 
are actually from books. Yeah. Right. They have to tell their story first, and then the movie just making that book come to life. Yeah. So books is good, but I just feel like some books are just too much to read that it's just hard for me to keep up. Not to say I cannot, but when I want to. Yeah. It's hard to find that motivation. I feel sometimes. Yeah. But. I feel like that's almost what motivates me to read books. It's like as I read them, it motivates me to read about these people's history and see what they've accomplished. And then I look back at myself. Like one of the books that I really liked was about Alexander the Great. Like obviously he conquered like half of the known world. He was amazing general and died really young. But I kind of compare myself in terms of like, age and what I've accomplished. And it's like all right, I haven't really done anything too crazy like Alexander the Great did like that guy just went out and he's like I'm gonna do this and then when did it no questions asked it's the same thing that Julius Caesar actually thought as I read Julius Caesar's book his idea was like what the heck like Alexander the Great did all of this in his mid-20s basically and I'm 33 and I'm still nowhere that I want to be and that was Julius Caesar's thinking and that's what made him great it pushed him to be even better he's like wait, these people in the past have accomplished so much more than I have up to this point in their life. Why can't I do the same? That's almost, or that's what motivates me. It's really cool because there's so many different insightful people and different things that you can learn from them. Like, I feel like one of the most popular ones is Will Smith, yeah? Will Smith. Have you heard about his well, biography? I heard, I heard about his lap. <laughs> yeah. Not my book. No, his book explains a lot about all of that feel bad for the dude a little bit but it's kind of interesting to see like what drives will smith what drives somebody that's was at one point one of the most preeminent movie stars of our generation there's just so much that you can learn from their entire lives and it motivates me to want to be better to want to do things in fact i went down like a little spiel of all the founding fathers of the united states i read every single book i could find about them <laughs> and then I read so much I wanted to be a politician it's like maybe after a week I decided like okay maybe don't want to be a politician probably get shot for some of the views that I have I'll get mocked yeah get mocked or it wouldn't be very pretty but it really does inspire me to do all these crazy things and to try and change the world interesting yeah. well I'm guessing but one like say I, I'm not disregarding like people who read books I just find that I feel like books really bring pushes you in some point yeah right for example especially when it, when it talks about like true stories you know i'm sure like fiction it gives you the excitement to know what happened but i feel like say it's fiction eh? yeah right okay <laughs> so i feel like books that um you know when i talk about biography i feel like it really pushes you especially when you tend to understand your story it gives you like that push motivation like you said you know like just see that find that if i did a great good i can do it better yeah and I think for me, so one of the books that I read, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, there we go. So, so that's <laughs> one of the two books that I read from Kawa Dingawa. See, when I read that book, obviously there's no movie about it, yeah. unless it's something I don't know about. But when I read the book, it helped me to understand the, the rat race. Yeah. What he means by Rich Dad Poor Dad, investment, all those kind of stuff. So it really pushes me. Obviously it took me way too long for me to finish that book. <laughs> But I did finish it. Yeah. But it helps me to understand, like money, you know, it makes me want to get invested. Uh, helps me to be able to make goals, set plans, and whatnot. And I think that's the power of book. Yeah. But can I read all the books with that same motivation? It's hard. I think it's your mindset towards the book. But for me, reading is not my forte. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah. You're hey. good. But I I feel like the knowledge that you get from book can be in so many different ways it could be watching movies or listening like through audible like it helps you to be able to to listen to it get the knowledge out from the book without having to read the book i think that's why most people are not reading it is because they are, they don't want to put in the time to read it yeah of course you can listen to it when you're driving especially in here in hawaii right it takes you like an hour to go to town right yeah. to freaking blast that in like quarter or like halfway down to the book yeah, exactly. That's totally what I do. <laughs> Anytime I'm walking or have a downtime, if I'm doing the dishes, listening to a book right there. It's all about trying to fit it into your time schedule. Like, hey, maybe you do have a lot of time in the mornings and you're able to go out and you're just able to sit down and read a book for 30 minutes. And that's totally okay. But also for some people, they're super busy. 
I promise there's still ways to fit, fit even a few minutes of reading into your life. Like all the time you hear about all these multi-millionaires and super successful people that one of the things they all have in common is that they, they read. Yeah, that they all read. And it's not that they're reading whatever really. Like, yeah, they may be reading Wall Street Journal, they may be reading news articles, but generally they're reading books to give themselves more knowledge on the topics that they need. That's something that I've found really inspiring also. Like I read the book about Elon Musk and Elon Musk, one of the things that sets him apart from other CEOs and founders and basically business owners is he'll go onto the floor with his people and try and learn as much as he possibly can from him, from all those employees that he has. Like at SpaceX, he hires some of the most brilliant rocket scientists and engineers on the entire planet. So what he does, he goes down and he works with these guys and he's asking them questions. He's trying to figure out what they're doing and then he internalizes all of it. And then he's able to say, hey, maybe let's try this. He's able to see it from a different perspective and help them problem solve while still learning, which I think is something that really helps him become one of the greats of our age, I guess, in terms of business and all of that. It's really all about pushing yourself to learn. It doesn't have to be just books, obviously. Like Daryl said, you can definitely learn so much from videos and things like that. But it's all about that drive to keep yourself learning. Like all too often we get home from school, college, you graduate, whatever, and then it's just done. Just work. I think we, I think we just talked about when you first, when you first started the podcast, we talked about knowledge, right? That's yeah. the topic of this whole uh, podcast. I think knowledge is key. I think knowledge is an everyday drive. Yeah. Right, if no even no matter how you're good where you feel like if you're good like you're top of the world, I feel like there's always things to learn. Yeah, exactly. Like human knowledge is insane. Like you make one Google Infinity. search Yeah, there's four hundred billion different topics that come up on one single search. Like you could be learning for the rest of your life. And I feel that you just need to hone that in and focus in on what you actually need to learn. Obviously, you don't even know all 400 billion things when you Google search the word carrot or whatever. But it's really good to learn certain things. And I feel like that's what books and videos do really well, is that they're able to condense all the information that's actually important and matters to you. And then you're able to just bang it out in four hours, five hours, and then try and internalize as much as possible. But also, Daryl, I want to ask you, have you ever reread any of the books that you finished? Not read, no. 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 I should. Yeah. I didn't know. Like I said, I only finished two books. Uh, well, I started about three or four books I read halfway. Like I said, I think it's just hard to like continue it. But I definitely there's something I need to do better this year. I actually set a goal that every semester I want to finish a book. There you go. It's about, it's about four months. But I feel like I think in four months, I should be able to finish a book. Like, yeah. It's not It's not that I say I cannot. It's like whether I want to or not. And that's my goal. It's really to read books. Like what you said, like most of the successful people read books. And I think they not just maybe not just read physical books. I'm sure like, there are other ways to learn as well. But I think the goal is they're constantly learning every freaking single day of their lives, right? They are learning, they are improving, yep. so that they can be better than where they are right now. Even though if they are top of the world, they can be even bigger, better. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's all about becoming better. Mm -hmm. And going back to the question that I asked, I think it's also really important to reread some of those books. Yeah, like, I agree. It's definitely very difficult. Like maybe you, it can get boring at times, but find the books that you feel taught you the most and go back and review them and try and put them together in a way where you can remember as much as possible. Like at the beginning of the podcast, we mentioned you'll maybe only remember 10 to 20% of what you actually read in the book or what you actually hear from your audible or audio book. So sometimes you need to reread that and you'll probably learn something new too. Like pick out a few very, very good or influential books that are just top of the line and maybe try and reread them every few years, every year, who knows, but just make it a habit to try and go back and review. It's kind of like what you learn in school. You always have to review for your test over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you'll forget everything. Right. Yeah. Another thing is as you learn, I feel like it's important to apply the things that you learn too. Like it's great to go out and learn rich dad, poor dad, and learn how to get out of the rat race and all these different things about how to view money. But if you don't apply any of it and you're still living paycheck to paycheck every single month, did you really get anything out of it? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. So all about actually 
I think applying it, let yeah. me say, acting action, because I feel like knowledge is good to have to obtain knowledge, but what you do in knowledge is what defines you as like a successful person. So I feel like if you can switch your knowledge into action, yeah, then you will do better than what you are. Because there's no point adding knowledge, but you're not using it. Then what the freak are you gonna do knowledge for? Like, yeah, why cram your brain if you could? insert knowledge in your brain and put it to use and so you're constantly adding more knowledge so you're yeah. constantly evolving you know exactly it's like you always have to be learning and training yourself you always have to be becoming better and then also with this knowledge you start to gain new perspectives like oftentimes we grow up in our own little bubble and we see straight and that's all that we see but as you keep learning and experiencing that bubble starts to expand and you start to see even more the bigger all picture the, yeah you gotta see the entire thing, all new horizons, and these new horizons can lead to new opportunities and can really help you in your life overall. Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully, guys, you learn a little bit from us. Like, if you guys wanna know all of the books that I've read, feel free to comment down below and I'll start sharing some of the things, some of the books that I feel like I learned the most from, some of the books that I feel were most influential to myself. Just go ahead, comment, and I'll share everything with you guys as long as you want. Yeah, stay tuned because you won't know. Maybe by the next three months, by the end of this semester, yeah. I'll be able to finish a book. And I haven't started a book yet, but if I do, if I did, I'm going to end it by this semester. Yep. So stay tuned if I did accomplish my goal. I'm staying accountable to all of you who are watching this. I'm going to finish reading a book so I can add three into my 23 years of my life. Let's go. We're going to build it up for Daryl, guys. Yeah, this is Landon. This is Daryl. Peace.